Double Dragon was originally released in arcades in 1987. It didn't see an NES release in the US until almost a full year later. I always knew that there was an arcade version, but I honestly never saw a physical machine until about a year ago. And I've been itching to play Double Dragon lately, so I figured now is a great time to do a palette swap episode. Before we get into the comparisons though, let's take a quick look at both versions. While the NES version was released later, it was the first game in the series that I had any exposure to. I decided to start my research with the game I grew up playing. I had never beaten Double Dragon before, so to finally accomplish that was pretty neat. Double Dragon is a side-scrolling beat-em-up, and arguably the game that made the genre popular. You guide Billy Lee through his mission as he fights to rescue his girlfriend Marion from Willy, the machine gun-toting leader of the criminal gang, the Black Warriors. Your face buttons either trigger a punch or a kick, and pressing both together will make Billy jump. As you fight through waves of enemies, Billy will gain new fighting abilities, such as an uppercut, a roundhouse kick, and my personal favorite, face, meet, knee. The fighting is a bit wonky, but if you get some of the nuances down, you'll be running through the first few levels of the game with ease. Using Billy's kick to stay out of range of his enemy's punches works pretty well after some practice, and the knee strikes and shoulder throw combo really help you plow through baddies quickly. If you try to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with punches, you'll likely get your face pummeled in, so stick with those kicks. The game isn't too long, but it's pretty tough to master. There are a few platforming elements present, such as jumping on a few moving platforms, and over pits, but fighting is the name of the game. The platforming isn't great, as Billy doesn't really control well in the air, but those sections don't pop up often. Overall, I really enjoyed my experience playing through Double Dragon on the NES. I played over and over again through countless game overs before I was finally able to save Marion and finish the game. It's not the best game on the system, but definitely one to check out. I had only played Double Dragon in the arcade on a physical machine once, and that was about a year ago. This run-through is my first decent exposure to the arcade version, and I'll be honest, I wasn't as impressed with it as I thought I would have been. The gameplay in the arcade port works pretty much the same way as the NES version, though with a dedicated jump button. Billy has all of his attacks from the start, so no need to gather points to learn new martial arts moves. Fighting through waves of enemies can be tough, but if you're playing on main, you'll have no problem getting through to the end because, you know, unlimited virtual quarters. That's not to say the game doesn't get frustrating though, because during my playthroughs I found myself getting angry at the fact that I just couldn't get hits on my enemy without getting knocked down over and over. It may just be that I'm not as experienced with the arcade version, but I suspect that it may not be me. The game also suffered a lot from stuttering and slowdown. I'm not sure if that was MAME or just how Double Dragon on the arcade is. As with the NES version, the game isn't too long. Stick with it, and in about 30 minutes or so, you'll be beating down Willie's door and making him wish he had never kidnapped Marion. Obviously, the first thing you'll notice between the two games is that the NES just isn't powerful enough to look as good as the arcade port. The character sprites are much more colorful and detailed in the original arcade version of Double Dragon, as are the backgrounds. The NES may not look as good as the arcade, but it still does a very good job of accurately representing the settings and characters shown in the original. It's a good looking Nintendo game. The music is mostly the same between ports, and they obviously use different instrument sets. I'm partial to the NES version myself, but that's just because it's so familiar to me. In the arcade original, Billy has all his attacks from the start. He can shoulder toss and roundhouse kick enemies without any need to accumulate points. On the Nintendo game, Billy must knock skulls to gain experience to use these moves. In addition, enemies won't start using jump kicks until the Lee brother learns to use it himself. There are plenty of different enemy types in Double Dragon. Both versions see the enemies Williams, Roper, and Linda. These three are lower ranking thugs of the Black Warriors, and make up the bulk of the fighting force. A Bobo is a hulking mountain of a man that shows up on the NES and the arcade. 
He can be kind of hard to handle if not approached with care. On the arcade, there's an alternate form of a Bobo named Bolo, who sports a mohawk and goggles. A Bobo is able to throw Billy in the arcade, but not on the Nintendo. Chintai is a karate master exclusive to the NES game, while the arcade gets Jeff, who has an attire and moveset similar to Billy. In addition to the small differences between the enemies, the NES version will only have one enemy type on the screen at a time, while multiple types will be present on the arcade. This is likely due to the limitations on the NES hardware. Double Dragon presents both the enemy and Billy with the ability to use various weapons. Baseball bats, dynamite, knives, whips, boxes, boulders, and barrels round out the arsenal. In both versions, enemies will carry these tools of destruction on screen, and Billy can disarm his opponents and use the weapons to his advantage. On the NES, once the enemy set that carried the weapon on screen has been taken care of, the weapon will disappear. On the arcade game, you can carry the weapon with you throughout the stage. Almost all of the stages from the arcade are present on the NES in one form or another. The NES adds a few different sections and changes a couple of others to lengthen the experience, however. The end of the second mission on the arcade is moved to the end of the first level on the NES, while the second mission is extended on the console. Instead of a cliffside enemy base approach, Billy makes his way through the underground caverns on the NES. Lastly, in the arcade version, all the stages flow together to form one big map, whereas on the Nintendo, they are broken up by a mission number screen. The NES game famously adds a few platforming sections, which do not fit in very well with the rest of the gameplay. Jumping onto moving lifts doesn't work very well with the jump kick. There is no real way to jump down ledges, and any time the game wants you to move downward, there is a real risk of jumping into a pit. You'll die until you figure out where to go. The arcade game doesn't include anything other than a short hop across a broken bridge in the forest. The arcade version is a two-player co-op experience, and a pretty memorable one from what a lot of people say. The NES game doesn't give you that option. The only way to have simultaneous two-player action is to play Mode B, which is a versus mode and not a great one. The two-player mode A just alternates between Player 1 and Player 2. Double Dragon 2 fixed this for Nintendo fans. For some reason, instead of Billy's ally in combat, his twin brother Jimmy, the double to his dragon, is the main threat behind the Black Warriors, and the one who ordered Marion kidnapped, on the Nintendo. In the arcade, Willy, the machine gun toting maniac, is behind it all, but on the NES he's just a sub-boss to Jimmy. There you have it. Those are the differences that I noticed when playing Double Dragon on the NES and Double Dragon on the arcade. If there are any differences that you've spotted when playing these two versions, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, later!